Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the optimization technique. Today we will discuss about the dynamic programming. Myself, Dr. Agar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute. What is the objective of this lecture is we will see how we can solve these problems like here when the constraints are either greater than sign, that is example number one in the video, less than when example two and whenever there is equality. So we will consider all these kinds of problem, whether it's a minimization, maximization in this video are there. So we will follow the same rule, whatever we have discussed in the example number one, you can, uh, you can follow the same for each of the problem. So first of all, you have to identify that how many decision variables are there. So it clearly says that in this problem, there are the three variables that is x1, x2, x3. So it is called as the three stage problem. So we define the s1, s2 and s3. What is the s3? So whatever the constraint, which consider of the x1, x2, x3, whatever the constant that is my x3 that is here. And from this x, what is the x, s2 means? The variable consists of the x1 and x2. So in this case, what is the variable corresponding to x2 is x1 and x2 only. And similarly, what is the s1 is the variable which consists of only x1 is there. So you can see this one is there. Now, another thing is that what is the value of x1 plus x2 plus x3? So it should be greater than or equal to 15. This is given to you. How you can find the value of this? So you can find from here that is s3 minus of x3. Similarly, how you can find the value of the x1 from here, that is s2 minus of x2. Once you are defining these three states, that is called as the stages are there, then we can move on the objective function. So let f of 1, s1 is the objective function corresponding to this, f2, s3 and so on. Now what is that? Now since this is objective function, so this is the s1. So you have to think about the function which is only on the x1, that is x minimization of the x1 scale. Similarly, x2 that is a variable consists of the x1 and x2 both. So that is a minimum of whatever they x1 plus x2 scale. Similarly, you can think about this third term are there. Since this is a third and so on. So the value of the x1 lies in between them. Now you can substitute the value of the x1 from here. This x1 is nothing but s2 minus x2. You can see this x here, this is there. Similarly, you can find the value of here. What is the value of this x1 square? You can write either of this or else you can write of this value. So I can write here as this is x2 plus what is the value of the x1 square is f of 1 s1. Similarly for here you can see what is the value of the x1 square plus x2 square is f2 s2. So I can write here as x3 square plus the value of this is f2 s2. So I put this as equation 1, 2 and 3. So my target is to solve this. 1, 2 and 3. So we can start from the first equation. Our target is to find the value of the x1. In the, from this equation, we will try to find the value of the x2 and so on. Now you can see from this, it is clearly says this f1, s1 is nothing but here, which is independent of the x1. So it means the value of the f1, s1 is here. Now we can substitute this value in equation number 2. So what is the value of the f2, s2 is here. Now your target is to minimize x2 over the domain 0 to s2. How you minimize them? So that's very simple. You can consider as a y here. So what is the rule for the minimization? First derivative with respect to x2 must be 0. Second derivative must be greater than 0. So what is that? If you take the second der first derivative with respect to x2 will be, so it will be my here. This is my s2 minus of x2 is 0. So after solving, you will get the expression as here and clearly sees that s by 2 is lies between the domain of here. Now what is the second derivative of this function is it's a 4 is a greater than 0. So it means it's a minimum. But you know that once whenever there is a close interval, so you have to find the minimum at the boundary points also that's a 0, s2 and the point which you got that. So what's the value of the y at x is 0. So you can substitute here. What is the value of the y when s, x2 will be 0? it is my s2 square and so on. So you can substitute each value here. You can compute the value of the y. So look at that. My target is to minimize which one is a minimum. So whatever the value of the s2, this part will always be the minimum. So therefore the minimum occurs at the point x2 by 2 and so on. Similarly, now we can try to solve this. We can substitute the value of the f2 s2 here in this expression. We will get as here. 
how you can obtain this because you can see initially we set the initial values as here this is my s3 what is the s2 is my here so i can write this expression of the s2 as s3 minus x3 so i can substitute this value as of here now to minimize this over the domain 0 to s3 i can consider y as of this and then take the sec first derivative and second derivative you can get here again you can see this value lies in between them so that means you can find the values either at the boundary points 0 the points at this s3 and at the boundary points so the corresponding value of the y you obtained as of here so which one is the minimum whatever the value of the s3 that part will always be the minimum because it's a 1 by 3 so therefore the minimum occurs at of here now since we solve all these three equations so what you obtain that s2 is my here s3 is my here and then and the given equations are this so what is that from here your target is to s3 is greater than or equal to 15 so but our target is to minimize them so what is the minimum value of this here is 15 once you get s3 is a 15 you can substitute here you can get the value of the x3 once you will get the value of the x3 and x x3 you can substitute here you can get the value of the x2 and so on so you can see once you will substitute this s3 value in here you will get the value of the x3 you can substitute the value of here you can get the objective function value similarly you can get the s2 value as this you can substitute the value of the s3 and x3 and so on so once you will get you will get all these value of the x1 x2 and x3 and the required answer is my here quickly look on the second example here the constants are less than sign and the problem is the maximization the last example was on the minimization again we will see the same thing are here now you can see there are the three variables so the s3 is my here because whatever the constants is given to you that is my s3 and you can see this is nothing but my here s2 is the the variable which consists of the x1 and x2 that is this value is my x2 what is the s1 is consist of only the first variable are here so you can write like this way can you find this value of the here from this this is nothing but s3 minus of x3 can you find the value of the x1 here this is s2 minus of 2x2 are this now once you are over the constraints are there now we can look over the objective functions so fi's are my objective function so fs1 that is a variable of the x1 here what is the s2 is the variable consists of first two terms are there that is x1 square plus 2x2 square similarly for the third r you can substitute the value of the x1 from here what is that this is s2 minus of this that is my equation number one i can substitute the value of the x1 as f1 s1 here this is my f1 s1 plus of the 2x2 square now remember that this problem is my maximization so that's why i write here as maximization last example was on the minimization so you can see the domain over here is 2x2 is less than of the because the constant here is my 2x2 so you can write here as a 2x2 lies between 0 to s the third constant is only my s x3 so i can write here as of this now in order to solve them we can again start with the first equation you can see that this equation is independent of the x1 so it is as such you can substitute this f1 s1 in here that is equation number 2 and from here you can find the value of the x2 as 0 divided by of this now how you can maximize them so the rule is again same you can take as a y what is the rule of the maximization is first derivative should be 0 and the second derivative must be less than 0 so you can substitute the value here you can get this point as of this so since clearly sees this point lies in between them now you can find the second derivative you can see this is a greater than zero it means this is not a maximum once it is not a maximum then how you can tackle that so you have to consider now consider at the boundary points these two points and since this point is not the maximum so there is no need to compute them so at the point x2 0 and s2 by 2 what is the value of the y you can obtain as here so since my target is to maximize the problem which one is the maximum this is my maximum so therefore y is maximum at x2 is 0 and f of 2 s2 is nothing but my here now you can substitute this f2 s2 value in equation number third and you will get this expression 
now you can substitute the value of the x2 how you can find that you can see what is the value of the s2 here is s3 minus of x3 r here now you can maximize over this how you can maximize again you can take the value of y compute the first derivative and second derivative you will get these two points are there clearly sees that this is greater than zero so it is not a maximum so we can take the points at the boundary only so from here you can see what is the value of that so which is maximum at here because whatever the value of the s3 you can obtain of this also how uh, al already we know that what is the value of the s3 you can see uh, since my problem is the maximization so s3 is my 8 so once s3 is my 8 so you can see which one is a maximum this is 64 this is 32 so this is my maximum so from here what you obtain that x2 is my 0 we obtain x3 is my 0 so I can write these equations and here now you can substitute this value s3 I can obtain I can substitute here s3 is my 8 x3 is my 0 so what is the value of the s2 this is my 8 once you can get the s2 as here you can substitute this value here so what is the value of the x1 this is nothing but 8 minus 2 times 0 that is 8 so what is the answer of that x1 is my 8 x2 is my 0 x3 is my 0 and the maximum of z is 64 look at the last example where the constraints are of equality signs again we will follow the same rule since there are the three three variables so it's a three stage problem so i can take this one firstly as of the s3 then of the x1 and x2 as my s2 and so on now this value is my 10 this is given to you this value is nothing but s3 minus x3 or else you can because s3 is equal to 10 so you can also write like here and what is the value of this is s2 minus of x2 so you can write like here you can also write s2 s3 as a 10 now since this is the constraints part now you can think over here you can see this part is since my problem is minimization so the first part then for the second and third look at the domain so this domains are taken from here x1 now this is only x2 and so on you can substitute the value of the x1 here this is the value of the x1 this is equation number one and this is the value of this is f1 s1 and so on now you can solve the equation number one as such we can get this is independent of the x1 so as such we can substitute this value of the f1 s1 in equation number two we can get here how you minimize this function again you can take the value of the y as here you can find the second derivative and the first derivative you will get this point as here and you can see this value is greater than zero so it's a minimum point and the minimum occurring either at the boundaries or at the critical points so you can see which one is the minimum so since it is the s2 square so this is the half of the s2 square so this is my minimum value so minimum occurs at here you can substitute this f2 s2 value in equation number third and then we can simplify that again how you can find that based on the value of the s2 are there how you can minimize this again you can consider as a y and similarly you can solve it you will get the minimum at of this point once you will get the minimum at here you can see x2 are here x3 are there you can summarize them like this way so since s3 is given to you 10 you can substitute the value of the s3 as here you can get the value of the x3 you can see here once you will get the value of the x3 are here you can substitute the value here you can easily get the value of the x s2 once you will get the value of the s2 you can substitute here you can get the value of the x2 and similarly for the x1 that is the required answer so this is the way you can solve this dynamic programming in the simple manner are there we will see uh, you can see this example again uh, this is the minimization problem are there constraints are greater than and some are there you can try to solve it yourself and let me know their answers in the comment box we will see in the next class how you can solve this part two of the dynamic programming what is the difference between them is you can see the objective functions are in the multiply sign here are the constraints are in the multiply sign here there is no negativity are there or you can say they are my say integer x1 x2 x3 are my integers how you can solve this this is the problem corresponding to the discrete case how we can solve them we will see in our next class till then you can simply follow this link for finding the various updated videos 
बेस्ट ऑफ लक स्टूडेंट्स हैप्पी लर्निंग थैंक यू